So one of the problems with uh, doing this J2ME cell phone application development is getting the programs on the phone. How do you actually do it? And so you know the whole there's this whole way, different way the on the air. It's it's just a mess. Uh, the easiest way I found is to actually just use Bluetooth. So um, in from mobile processing, uh, go up here and do export midlet. Midlet is the uh, <laughs> it's the phone applet. I don't know why they call it midlet. And it'll chug for a while, but it doesn't really show you that it's chugging. So you don't really know until it pops up this little uh, directory window, like that. The thing you want is the jar file, which is in the center. And when you select it, you can go up to this finder services thing and say, oops, say send file to Bluetooth device. And this will pop up another program called Bluetooth File Exchange, which, oh, there it is. And you can, you can choose which Bluetooth device you want to send it to. In this case, I want to send it to the top one, which is my phone here. And so if you've already authenticated your, your, your uh, phone, then it'll send it without any passcodes or whatever. And you see on the phone now it says, one new message. Now when you go and see the message on the phone, it's just a file from Bluetooth. And you can open it. It runs this installer. And you can say install, and it gives you security warning because it's not signed and everyone ignores that. Here's some details about it if you care, which you usually don't. Then you can pick where you want to send it. Let's put it in the main phone memory. And there, we're done. So at this point we can get out, get into the main application little uh, menu space. Go into, whoops, well, do, do, do. Go into where it put it, which is in here. And then run it which, if you can tell, says Ruby Control. So you run it. And the way I have it set up right now is that it will search for different serial port devices on Bluetooth and, um, when, and once it finds ones, it'll connect. So this initiates the search. And there's the guy right now. It's, a, you know, it's plugged and turned on, so it should work. Oh, look, it found one. So that's the MAC address, or whatever the Bluetooth equivalent to that is. It should update that with a name. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so it didn't, ah. So here's all the different serial ports, or Bluetooth serial ports found. In this case, it found just one. Uh, Blue Radios is the uh, different OEM name for the Blue Smurf module that I got from SparkFun. So you can select that, pressing zero. It asks you this little confirmation because I think I haven't paired it with the phone or something, but just say yes. And then it should. Well, of course, the Roomba should have been turned on. But that's okay, you can re reset the Roomba. And now you can drive it like normal. And that's how to get a J2ME, bleh, J2ME application from a Mac to a phone and then actually run it and do something useful with it. See you later.